Are you ready to go? Hello and welcome to Telewizja Republika. Since December, Ukraine has made significant advancements in air defense, destroying at least seven Russian planes, including high-value assets like the Barry F-A-50 and Ilyushin Il-22. Last weekend, media reported advancing the A-50 aircraft to Russian class wreckage submarine, as this plane was reportedly shot down. The A-50 plane, critical for air defense system detection and coordination plane, is a rare asset with uh, Russia reportedly having fewer than 10 in its fleet. The Il-22 used for airborne command and control is also limited in number. These losses, which could amount to over $600 million, signify the major blow to Russia impacting its air strategy and reducing sorties. As Kiev Independent writes, Ukraine's success in this is partly attributed to advanced air defense system received in 2023 from West, such as the US Patriots. The loss of this aircraft not only has financial implications for Russia, but also affects trained crew members, with uh, the A-50 typically having a crew of 15. Ukraine's upcoming acquisition of F-16 jet fighters from Western Allies is expected to further bolster Ukraine's air capabilities. In the meantime, in a recent operation in the south and Ukraine, the Ukrainian military successfully destroyed a Russian OSA, a WASP anti-aircraft missile system, using an American-made HIMARS rocket launcher. Kyiv Post reported on this lately in this article. Despite, despite the poor visibility, a drone crew, as we read from the 73rd Maritime Center of the Ukrainian Special Operations Forces, located the OSA, which had been used against Ukrainian troops and relayed its coordinates to HIMARS operators. And then, boom, the strike resulted in the complete destruction of the anti-aircraft system, as confirmed by footage released via Telegram and verified by Kyiv Post Analyst. The OSA, a Soviet-era automated all-weather air defense system, is designed to protect motorized rifle and tank divisions developed in 1960 and operational since 1971. The OSA AKM variant carries six missiles with a high probability of hitting air targets. That's the way OSAs look like. We got plenty of them in the post-Soviet uh, area. Most of the post and former Soviet uh, the camp armies uh, have this kind of equipment. The cost of a single missile for the OSA is estimated at $56,000, while the entire system's value varies between $1 million to $10 million. Earlier, in January, Ukrainian forces also destroyed a Russian Soltsnepio heavy flamethrower system valued between $6.5 million and $15 million. Bravo! Congratulations, guys! As civilized world cheers for Ukraine after hitting Raskis here and there, General Freeze has taken over the front lines. The Kyiv Post discusses the impact of cold weather on the Ukraine-Russia conflict, noting an increase in Russian soldier surrenders and uh, reduced ground attacks. The fighting in Ukraine has slowed down across most of the front due to severe cold weather, with an increase in Russian prisoner of wars report. Kremlin forces have reduced their ground attacks because of the harsh conditions and poor frontline supply. Nothing new in this war. As we know, Ukrainian forces maintain their position with ongoing artillery and mortar exchanges. The cold weather has grounded drones and limited soldier capabilities, affecting both sides. There is a notable increase in Russian surrenders attributed to poor conditions and morale. Also, nothing new. As the weather is cold, the political environment is 
hot. As we have found out in 2024, Estonia plans to cease funding rational language education as part of its transition to a unified Estonian language education system, announced Prime Minister Kaja Kallas. That's an article about it. And that's pretty obvious because of the history of Estonia being taken over by Russia for, for years. Uh, that uh, is designed uh, to bring all Estonians into a single information space and promote the use of the Estonian language uh, nationwide, of course. The decision explained by Kalas in Parliament is not an attempt at ratification, but rather an effort to avoid having two separate education systems. The transition endorsed by President uh, Alar Karis in December 2022 will begin in 2024-25 academic year with kindergartens and primary schools. By the 2032-33 academic year, all educational levels will have transitioned to Estonian. Currently in Estonia, where Russian speakers comprise about 25% of the population, children can study in their native language until ninth grade. In high schools, over 60% of subjects are taught in Estonian, while about 40% are in Russian. This kind of ethnical tensions are always a fuel of Russian hostile activity. We see it all over the spaces where Russia used to rule in the times of the communists. So those ethnical clashes are used and amplified by Russian active measures. And that's the cause why we talk about the Suvalki Corridor. Speaking of which, and that's an article that was published by The Build on our site, rackrackon.com, we talk about it. A confidential Bundeswehr document reported by Bild presents a scenario where Russia might initiate aggression against NATO with focus on the Suvalki gap between Poland and Lithuania. In, in both of those countries, Russia tries to use and amplify the same kind of tensions as we were speaking about in case of Estonia. According to Bild and the paper that they obtained, as soon as 2024, Russia may attack uh, Lithuania and, and Poland. The document outlines a detailed timeline predicting the mobilization of forces and the sequence of military and hybrid actions leading to a heightened state of conflict. It highlights the strategic movements and the buildup of troops and equipment demonstrating the potential scale and progression of a military standoff in Eastern Europe, basically in the Eastern NATO flank. What's my take on all of this? Well, the Russian way of understanding war differs from ours. Escalation and de-escalation of military tensions are just devices in the Russian toolbox. The ultimate goal is to constantly spread its sphere of influence. In that context, the fact that this particular place, Valky Gap, is hard to conquer by military means by Russia does not mean that Russia won't attack it in this way or another. The Bundeswehr paper describes a possible scenario of this kind of escalation. But the other context is the ongoing war in Ukraine. German intelligence agencies, by leaking this kind of paper, assuming it is a real thing, are sending a political message to the world. Russia is a threat to us, so it's better to appease her with Crimea, Donbass and partitioned Ukraine, not to provoke another war, which result is unclear. The only thing is that if only NATO's European states and US played the real game, the deterrence factor would leave no space for discussion. Russia is no match for NATO, if only NATO wants to resist. The thing is, not everybody in NATO, not everybody in Europe is on the same page in that context. You can join us on rackracon.com, that's our website. Leave us your email as we are posting daily analyses based on the open source intelligence that we subscribe 
and pay for it. Your daily updates from the front line of the war that is waged against our civilization. Because that's what we are going to talk about on my show. My name is Michał Rajo and this is Rack Rakon. And we roll it. And here to talk about those things, and not only those things, is one and only Joe Lindsay. Joe, great to have you again on our program. Great to see you again. You're in Lviv, I believe. Yeah, hello from snowy Lviv. And as I always want to remind everyone, we have electricity and heat. Uh, unlike last winter, this is a sign of Ukrainian uh, piece by piece, Ukrainian triumph that this winter is much better than last year. Even despite the general freeze taking over the front line, uh, as we read in the, in, in the several uh, analytic pieces. Joe, before we start, uh, here is something that, that you send us in the time when we haven't seen each other. I've received this mes message on my telephone. I, I was having lots of work, but I smiled like, you know, <laughs> that's the thing. That's the way that the drones are, that are financed, among others, by our viewers, but by you, our viewers, that's, that's the moment I'm addressing you, our viewers, you are financing operations of those drones, and those are deadly machines, and those are machines that are helping Ukraine to win the war against the aggressors. Yeah, and we can see right here, uh, this, well, I mean, these are drones that actually the audience uh, contributed to, to purchase. And, you know, over, it's very strict rules. So those who give money uh, to a, the foundation in the U.S., the tax-deductible donations, uh, those things are only used for search and rescue and humanitarian purposes. But we have some very great renegade viewers who send me money directly uh, via PayPal, which you can do at ukrainianfreedomnews.com. And that money, it's just money we can use for anything, and with that money, we can buy uh, the FPV uh, lethal drones. These little these little guys, only a couple hundred dollars, uh, and and you know a small three hundred to five hundred dollar drone uh, can take out, as we see in, in these videos, uh, very expensive Russian equipment, including as we see here uh, these Russian uh, multiple rocket launchers that are worth about fifteen million. Dollars so with so that's that's by, that's the money that are well invested, hundred couple of hundreds yeah. of dollars can uh, take out the uh, the Russian military uh, stuff worth worth millions. Uh, how well, what's the way it works? It's just a flying uh, explosive. Do I do I understand it properly that the drone has to yeah, well, approach it, the thing that it wants to destroy and then bang it explodes like a like a booby trap. Yeah, actually, we just purchased a new batch of these uh, drones the other day, and I was inspecting them. And, I mean, the, the drones, the well, some of them are now made here in Ukraine, but many of them come were made in China, and they're used around the world for Instagram, photograph videographers, and, you know, they have a camera on them, uh, and, and that's their main purpose. But Ukrainians, the first thing they do when they, if, they, if the drones are made in China, they remove the Chinese software, so they can't, Beijing can't spy or can't give Russia information uh, on the whereabouts of these drones. So they prove it in that sense. Uh, they add night vision to it so they can, you can see where they're going. The drones have a camera. Uh, and then they add explosives to it. And so e e each one of these little, you know, for just a few hundred bucks plus the cost of the ex explosives, and that's not something we deal with. Uh, but once that is added, so a little bit's more than about, it's more than several hundred dollars, but you add the explosives and for very little money, you can destroy mass, massive pieces of equipment. Uh, this also requires the ingenuity uh, of the Ukrainians uh, to be able to tinker with these machines and to be able to guide them to where they need to go. Uh, but it is, it is, uh, you know, when you when you listen to the audio, I don't know if we could play that, but you know, to hear the Ukrainians cheering and know that those people who are cheering, these are people we know, uh, you know, through, you know, the, the people we're helping are people we know, and these are people who were civilians on February twenty third, twenty twenty two. You know, and, uh, and and there's even a husband and wife that signed up to fight, uh, and that, that they're working on this together. But as you hear, as you hear the, the excitement in their voices, they're not happy that about death. They're happy about they're protecting their 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 country and the yeah, idea but, of but freedom. Yeah, but this is this is actually the thing that everyone who follows the developments of this uh, war had time to get used to in a way that uh, each time. 
the, I don't know, the rocket launcher hits the missile that is traveling through the Ukraine airspace. Each time the, uh, the javelin hits, I don't know, the attack helicopter or any other, uh, I don't know, drone, uh, we hear those, uh, those, those cheerings like, like on a football match and it's understandable in a way. Because it's, well, the, the famous video of Courage Bridge on Fire being a, 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 a mocked song of, a, of a supporters of one of the football clubs uh, is also about the same emotion. I mean, this is not being joyful about somebody's death, that's the part of the war, but this is a joy of being able to fight war while protecting your own, uh, your own country. I mean, those missiles go somewhere. Those missiles hit somebody's household, somebody's uh, building, somebody's car, uh, and each time it's being taken down, uh, it's a reason to, 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 to be joyful. Yeah, and Mihal, and think about, I mean, we had a major, there was another Russian major missile attack on Saturday morning. Uh, and it was not as nowhere near as destructive as what we saw on January 2nd. But the Russians sent a lot of missiles over Ukraine. And, you know, I realize, you know, they, the missiles are always changing course, uh, especially the, the hypersonic ones. And the Russians are able to create maximum uh, angst because they'll, they'll send the missiles over almost every region of Ukraine before they try to hit their targets. And so part of that is to, you know, evade air defense. But I think it's also trying to you know, make sure everyone is, is, is suffering uh, throughout the entire country. And you just see just how sinister, uh, you know, the, 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 even the, the, the psychological warfare is and why it's so important, you know, why Ukraine, I mean, you need, the, you need psychological victories. And by the way, I mean, the mood, as I've said, has been pretty heavy here the past weeks when you realize that, you know, the, the support from, the Washington, from Washington, for example, is not as serious as they claim, but the, there has been a huge morale boost uh, the past few days with that, the, the, the reports on Sunday that Ukrainians, with the limited resources that, that they have, destroyed two of Russia's most powerful, uh, air, two, most powerful airplanes. Yeah, Joe, uh, that, that, brings us to the, that brings us to the issue that I started uh, this, this program with. Could you, could you explain our viewers what does it mean that the Ukraine hit the A-54? like 24 hours, it wasn't even certain if that is what really happened. We've heard some reports online also in Polish Infosphere, uh, but there was some downplaying of it. Let's wait until this information is confirmed, because if that's true, that's a big thing. Why? Yeah, and that's always the case. You have to wait to, to be able to confirm it. And it's because th th this is the same thing that Ukraine has done with the storm shadow missiles from the United Kingdom going back to the end of the summer. Uh, when, when they do get these long-range weapons or ability to, to, and the ability to use them, they use them precisely and to great effect. And I think Ukraine is doing, I mean, they're doing everything they can to show Washington and Berlin and, and the rest of the world, if you give them the tools, look what they can do. And so with the limited tools they have, they took out two of the most important planes in, in the Russian Air Force. Do we know uh, how the they did that? Uh, no, I, this is, we're not going to, I don't think we're going to know about how they did it uh, for, for, I don't think we'll know that for a while. Uh, there's plenty of rumors about it. Um, but the, 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 the best answer to that question is certainly with ingenuity, because they have limited resources. Uh, you know, some people were speculating maybe with Patriot missiles. I don't know. We don't know. But the main thing we do know is that the A-50, a $330 million uh, Russian plane, which is, a, it, it, I think Russia, they only had 10, now they have nine. It's very instrumental in, in, in guiding Russian attacks on Ukraine. These horrible, uh, as we especially have seen since New Year's, those horrible nationwide missile attacks. Uh, the A-50 is very instrumental in that. Russia now only has nine of these planes, uh, $330 million. Uh, and then the Ukrainians also uh, uh, hit the uh, uh, IL-22, which is a, a command plane. And that's also very instrumental in the attacks. And so, you know, I mean, what Ukrainians have been saying and Ukraine's reporters have been, uh, supporters have been saying uh, for a long time, Ukraine needs the ability to hit bases deep within Russia from which Russia launches these major attacks. They can't do that yet because they don't have the weapons for it. But what they are doing in their ingenuity is destroying some of the jets uh, that are instrumental or the planes that are instrumental in those attacks. And I think, you know, this is as the world sort many Western leaders sort of waver Ukraine is, is trying to send a clear message. Look what we can do. We can finish this job 
if you just give us the tools. Yeah, if, if you are wondering, our viewers, if, if, if you are wondering uh, what is the, uh, what does John mean saying that this A-50 aircraft is, is instrumental in this kind of attacks, just think of it as a, uh, as a Russian answer to AWACS uh, system, the flying uh, command control uh, of the air attacks. And basically this is, uh, this is the thing. Jeff Fisher, who is uh, our guest, very often spend years working in this kind of, uh, of course, Western-made uh, plane. So basically, this is the, the awareness control, a situational awareness plane for a Russian military while Russia is attacking uh, infrastructure with their missiles, with their airplanes and all other devices that they uh, use. Uh, Joe, but... Uh, on the other hand, uh, we are also uh, having information about the effects of the winter, I wouldn't say break, because the war didn't stop, uh, but we read the reports in the Ukrainian media that uh, there is an increasing number of Russian prisoners of, of war, and in a way, this war affects, and this, this winter uh, time affects uh, Russia, uh, more than Ukraine. I wonder if that's if 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 that's really the case, because I don't believe that having like you know twenty minus twenty degrees centigrade could be less or more harmful for any of the fighting sides. I think it's 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 dangerous and bad for both. Yeah, I'm always wary of, of those sort of press accounts that you know from sort of inexperienced people that try to. I mean, every as you say, every season of this is extremely difficult. Uh, that's that that that's the reality, and then the you know I mean. Like we see it at a micro level, uh, you know, communicating with uh, our friends at the front line to get them the drones, for example, and, and the other th things they need. Uh, but the the, the 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 main question remains, and, and the thing that I think many people are trying to distract from the main question is: Does do, does Washington, does Berlin, you know, d d does the West have the will to support real victory for Ukraine? And I was, you know, because yesterday was uh, Martin Luther King Day. Uh, I always like to go back and reread uh, Dr. Keene's letter from a Birmingham jail. And I was really struck by, you know, he was so frustrated with what he called the white moderates, the people that were saying to, to uh, black Americans, uh, you know, just calm down. You'll, you'll just keep your freedom quietly and we'll, we'll fix things eventually. And as I was reading Dr. Keene's frustrations, I was saying this exactly applies to what we have right now. Uh, Martin Luther King wrote, in that letter from Birmingham jail, he said he had reached the regrettable conclusion that the white moderate is more devo devoted to order than to justice. The person who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, peace which is the presence of justice. And then he says that, that this, this moderate person says to the oppressed people, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action. And as I read those words, I, I think of Israel, but I also I think yeah. of especially of Ukraine. And yeah, you know, as if this the, war could win itself, the, the 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 peace and justice could be reestablished just like out of thin air. No, this is a war, so so to end it, you have to win it, or based on what Ronald Reagan famously said, or uh, lose. And when you lose, you are ending the war, and that's the easiest way to 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 to, to, to end the war. But we all can ask the question if that's what we really would like to achieve as a Western civilization. Joe, that brings me to my final question. And this question is, is related to a breaking news, a, a, an article that rocked through the, um, the media waves of the world infosphere. It was uh, uh, also quoted, I think, in all of the uh, Western European media. Uh, the German Bild article by a journalist who is very well informed about all the issues regarding the German policies uh, towards Russia. Mr. Julian Repke, as, as far as I remember, he said that uh, the Bild obtained a paper of the German military that assesses the uh, possibility of Russian attack against NATO member states, basically Lithuania and Poland. Uh, because the idea that is described in this article is that Russia is ready or will be ready pretty soon, because there is a, a certain timeline in this uh, article, to uh, go from uh, Belarus to 
Kaliningrad uh, Kaliningr Kaliningr Oblast, uh, what basically means taking over parts of territory of Lithuania and Poland, which is known by the name Suwalki Corridor. I wonder what do you make of this article? It's not that it's something new, that we know that Russia is interested in attacking uh, NATO and cutting off the Baltic states through the Suwalki Corridor. Well, you know, we have to remember all, the, all this war and everything around it, the geopolitics is both a poker game and a chess game, you know, and uh, it's, there's lots of disinformation. Uh, by the way, uh, the same build had a headline on January 9th, uh, Putin's winter offensive fails. Uh, so very clear about that. But this, I wonder, uh, you know, in looking at the, the story about the, the, the fears that, that Russia could even attack Germany in, in a couple of years, uh, is this meant to make people afraid to say, oh, we, now we need to negotiate? Uh, but I if indeed that's the, the goal of, the, of this, uh, you know, could you imagine if, and this is what Ukrainians, have keep, what Ukrainians keep saying, if Russia controlled a major part of Ukraine, think of all the resources and how empowered Russia would be uh, to cause further damage. And even before we get to Germany in 2025 or so, as that article uh, was suggesting, um, more immediately, look at Sweden. Uh, the past uh, several days, uh, I, I spent much time in Sweden, and my Swedish friends uh, were writing me, and they're nervous. Uh, several people wrote to me and said, do you think Sweden will be invaded? Uh, and, and, and they want to know about the experience here, because Sweden, um, it, they feel unprotected, not yet in, in NATO. Uh, they have a border with Russia. And, you know, we think of Sweden as a safe and sophisticated society. It's much smaller than Ukraine, less than 10, about 10 million people. And they have not had a war since the 18th century. So, you know, Ukrainians were fighting since 2014. Sweden could easily be vulnerable. And, and so this, this is the question that, you know, the world has to realize. Like, are we going to, you know, the, the longer you let this drag out, uh, the, the, more, the more havoc Russia can cause. And uh, it would so easily be answered, Ukrainians argue, if you could give Ukraine everything they need to win. And Ukrainians have shown whether it's with those storm shadow missiles in, in, in uh, September uh, on the, on, in Crimea and the Black Sea, that they can get the job done if you give them the tools. That's why when Rishi Sunak was here in Kyiv several days ago, uh, he promised a huge package from the UK, an enormous amount of drones and long-range weapons. So the UK, perhaps because they remember well the history of World War II, you, the UK is strong on this. But Washington and so many of our politicians and everyone running for office in the U.S. is absent. I, I just saw, um, I heard from my friend, the chief rabbi of Ukraine. He's in Washington right now, and he was meeting with uh, several congressmen, including Thomas Massey from Kentucky, who doesn't support Ukraine or Israel, uh, you know, funding for, for, the, for those countries. And uh, this, is, it, th th this is the question we have to realize, and, and maybe this Build article can help people sort of have a thought experiment yeah, I, I always, when, when I read this stuff. kind of, of semi-official statements, because it's an obvious leak from the uh, Western Germ the German, German military uh, circles, uh, when I read this kind of, uh, of documents, I always ask a question about the political goal and the political agenda of uh, German elites. And basically, German elites are entirely or almost entirely strategically pro-Russian. The Nord Stream policies were supported by both uh, major mainstream parties. And when we talk about the off-stream parties, let's put it this way, they are even more pro-Russian. So it looks, at least from my perspective, as I just mentioned in my monologue, like a kind of uh, uh, a curved ball uh, and an information that if we do not feed Russia with the, the Luhansk, uh, Oblast, Donetsk and Crimea, we are going to have a war uh, at our doorstep. And this doorstep means Poland. Well, Mia, yeah, I'll just say in response Poland. to that, I mean, because it can be scary and you read that article and you can- Yeah, yeah, every, that's the goal. But remember this, like, Ukraine hit the headquarters of Russia's Black Sea naval fleet. They, just, they hit the headquarters. They destroyed it. We, last winter, we had no electricity, hot water, heat, and now Ukrainians have found a way to survive. Now we have, you know, it's, we're not living in the Middle Ages. And Ukrainians took out two, like, each of those jets that they hit was part of a fleet of only 10 or 12. So a huge portion of the Russian Air Force, of the key 
assets Russia needs to launch just, attacks Just think about country. this blow as a blowing of 10% of this capability yeah. of Russian military. With very little resources. <laughs> Joe, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, maybe we got one or two minutes so you can ask our viewers uh, to, 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 to send some fundraising so that uh, you can finance, our viewers, you can finance some more frontline activities of, of the people who are fight, fighting for the survival. You got one minute, Joe. Yeah, we, we, we welcome support, especially for drones right now at ukrainianfreedomnews.com. And, you know, as I... Uh, it, it was a heavy, heavy feeling the past weeks because of the big Russian attacks. But I think Ukrainians are, you know, they have found, OK, sort of a, a new spirit. Uh, it's still Christmas here. People are still singing in the streets and keeping their, their spirits boosted and, and remembering every day that, you know, anywhere under Russian occupation uh, is total hell. And uh, so anyone who wants to stand with free people uh, here, uh, we welcome support at UkrainianFreedomNews.com. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we can choose in this time to be the moderates to tell people to keep their freedom in check uh, or, or to say, hey, this is good and evil. It's very clear and uh, we can get the job done. We are greedy for justice. Let's put it. Let's put it this way. Yes. Uh, Joe, thanks a lot. Uh, see you soon. Uh, we're going to see each other next. No, next Monday. No, I, I'm going to have a vacation, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time for a long, long time. Uh, one week vacation, but starting only from, uh, from from tomorrow. So we're gonna see each other tomorrow. We are not going to see Joe on Monday, but next week week we're gonna uh, we're gonna find a, a chance and opportunity to talk again about what's going on in in Ukraine. Joe Lindsay, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. Uh, as you know, you can follow us on rackracon.com. That's our mm, website. You can leave us your email so that we can get in touch with you on Substack. Uh, you can find a daily dose of uh, open source intelligence reports that we read and that we try to describe and send straight to your inbox. So if you do want to stay ahead of the curve and be informed about the ongoing war about against the West, that's the good place to leave us your contact. We see each other tomorrow. Stay with Televizia Republika and do not forget to uh, push the subscribe button, even though this channel is mainly in Polish. We do have our Poland daily English section, so try to catch up and uh, find the daily dose of Rack Racon and not only on Televizia Republika. Stay safe.